Hey guys, just wanted to make a quick video to show my CFast to SSD setup on the Ursa Mini. Um, this is what I believe is the cheapest and um, less, the cheapest and hopefully the lightest setup um, that I was able to find. And I just wanted to do a video showing it and also showing up the setup time. So uh, without further, further, further ado, start the setup here. So, main component is obviously this CFAST to eSATA P, and that's important, um, cable that you can find on Amazon. It retails for about 68 bucks and takes a little while to ship. But so you connect it to where you would usually connect the CFAST cable. Then, another important step is I went ahead and I Velcroed the back of my um, Anton Bauer or it could be the V-Lock battery that you have and I just thought this would be the best setup for what I was trying to do and I'll hopefully you'll see why so just connect the battery and the way I like to set up my cable is I just bring it around here now before we do that uh, third piece in the puzzle would be this slightly larger than I would like Andower, um, sorry, actually these are two cables. This one is the Andower DTAP to USB, and there are two USBs. And as you can see, it comes with the uh, voltage regulator so that it converts from 12, 14 to 12, all the way to 5, or else you will, will fry your accessories, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, fairly cheap I think I got it for about 20 bucks it is longer than I would like but um, you know I guess it's better to have something longer and then use a tie down like this so I connect it to the DTAP port on the actual battery mount uh, sorry for the battery plate and not the battery itself and the reason for that is I um, want to be able to use a setup without the battery as well. I believe most battery plates come with a D-tap. So once I connect that there, I usually just put it here and then bring this all around the other way. And then what I like to do is I bring this over, bring this little cable over and use this as a way to hold this one down just just to keep it a little bit safer I guess and uh, bring it all around here as you can see so it's coming all the way from behind and then of course last but not least this is the StarTech um, 2.5 SSD enclosure link is going to be in the description this one comes with a few connections. This one comes with a DC input, 5, 5 volt DC input, a USB 3, and most importantly, an eSATA P. Now, you should be able to use any enclosure that has both USB 3 or maybe even regular USB and the eSATA P. Because when you're using the eSATA P, the uh, it's it's used as the data it gets overridden and the USB is just for power now I tried using uh, a DTAP to DC converter uh, didn't work for some reason so I'm just using the USB to power this and it's been working pretty well and of course I gone ahead and I uh, velcroed same velcro industrial strength got it for about three bucks at Walmart and uh, I just velcroed the back of it so once you put it here, just align it sort of, I guess. And now I know this seems like it would be just this flimsy setup, but it is rated up to 10 pounds. And in my testing, it stays pretty, pretty solidly. Um, let's see if that focuses there. Now so we have the cable coming up around here you just bring this cable in and uh, 
connect it to the bottom part to the eSATA port as so and then last piece in the puzzle would be just a regular USB 3 cable and I try to find a smaller one but this one's working so far so just gonna bring it up a little bit so I can see this better and connect that there you have it now I like to bring this one around as well you know you can set up your cables however you'd like but I try to keep them a little bit snug if I can and then of course I also use the blue cable that's coming around sort of as a way to tie this down now, this isn't very you know I wouldn't say it's the best setup but it does work and you just connect the USB power here uh, the age old USB problem to connect of course <laughs> just never find the right there we go and now so that's about it and that was about uh, five minutes setting up so let's turn on the camera and let's see if it works now what I have noticed is when you connect it before the camera's on at least the USB power it just doesn't work so what I usually do is I disconnect and then reconnect once the camera is on rather for some reason there's this uh... there's one of these that doesn't actually there you go so yeah now it's on and as you can see here hopefully it'll focus we now have a card that could record up to four hours of ProRes 422 and yeah this would be the setup this would be it um, I wouldn't say it's the best setup but it does stay on you know you could find a better way this is just the setup that I found that where it, it gets less in the way and uh, it does work now in this encasing I'm using a Samsung Evo 850 one terabyte and I've been able to record 4.6k up to 60 frames per second uh, at 4 to 1 raw now I usually just shoot ProRes with this camera so um, not a lot of raw but of course if you do want raw what you would need is a better card a better sorry better SSD now the beauty of the setup is that if you consider I pay 250 for the Samsung SSD and uh, 250 for uh, Delkin devices CFast 2.0 128 gigabyte card which is insane if you think about one terabyte versus 128 gigabytes for the same price and uh, yeah as you can see it won't come off now I've done some testing and uh, it I really for my purposes this won't come off now you can go ahead and try to find a way to secure that better even if let's say um, you're gonna get this and let's say you're going to put it upside down. It still works quite nicely. Upside down on a steady cam, perhaps. Yeah, so that is my CFast to SSD setup, which I consider to be fairly cheap. The setup without the SSD costs about, it, this whole thing costs about uh, 100 bucks. And uh, it. It should, I'll put the links in the, in the description. 
Now, there's another, there's an official CFAST to SSD converter called, I think it's ATOC, CFAST to SSD converter. Would I recommend it over this? Well, for my purposes, since I'm just trying to find the lightest, cheapest way to do everything, lightweight, cheap, uh, this is better for me, but I would still recommend it if you're looking into a more professional um, setup. I'm going to put the link in the description of that as well. You know, this this here is is good for me, but not for everyone. So yeah, I uh, hope this helps people, and let me know if there's any way that I could improve the setup. I'd be keen to hear your opinions. Now, of course, uh, for the people who don't think this is strong enough, I'm just doing this test to show that, you know, even holding it by the SSD, it really is, you know, rated to hold um, up to 10 pounds and it won't fall off on its own but again of course it could be a concern if you're um, gonna be you know like I, I would be fine using this I, I feel safe about using this running around like crazy doing you know steady cam work and all that um, but if there's uh, the issue of maybe bumping into something that would you know that that kind of brute force is something that you want to avoid anyways so um, it's just a matter of knowing what your shoots gonna be like and of course if you need something more heavy-duty that's why you would go to the other ATOC one the ATOC converter um, but yeah this this will work as you can see it's working pretty well still very very much attached and um, It'll hold its own uh, for those of you trying to save up some money and um, a less, uh, a smaller kit. Oh, anyways, hope this helps.